Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I will look at the scalability of Windows Server 2016 for both physical and virtual deployments. By the end of this video you'll be familiar with the maximum amount of hardware supported by a Windows Server 2016 server. So let's get started. With Windows Server 2016, Microsoft has raised the bar when it comes to scalability. To appreciate the scalability of Windows Server 2016, I'll compare the hardware limits to those of Windows Server 2012 R2. To begin with, let's start by looking at logical processors. With virtualization now all the rage, the main purpose of a physical server nowadays is to host multiple virtual servers. Because virtualization is now so prolific, the maximum number of processors supported by a Windows Server is no longer measured in terms of physical processor sockets, or even by the number of processor cores. Instead, processor scalability is measured in terms of logical processors, because these are what you allocate to virtual machines. Windows Server 2012 R2 supports up to 320 logical processors per physical server, whereas Windows Server 2016 supports up to 512 of these logical processors. This is all very well, but how do you determine the number of logical processors in your system? Ultimately, the number of logical processors you have will depend entirely on which processor manufacturer you're using. AMD or Intel. If you're using an AMD processor, calculating logical processes is quite easy. In the AMD world, one logical processor is equal to one processor core. Take for example a physical server. Imagine that this physical server has two physical AMD processors installed. Both of these physical processors are quad-core processors. When you add up the number of cores in this server, this gives you a grand total of 8 cores. Since there are 8 cores in the server altogether, this equates to 8 logical processors, which can be allocated to virtual machines when Hyper-V is installed. Now let's take a look at Intel processors. With Intel processors, there's an extra step involved. Let's consider the same physical server from before. Once again, two physical processors are installed, only this time they're Intel processors. As before, these processors are quad-core processors, meaning the number of cores again adds up to 8. So far, this looks similar to AMD, but with Intel processors, after adding up the number of cores, you then have to consider a feature called hyperthreading. Nowadays, hyperthreading is found in the vast majority of modern Intel processors. According to Intel, when hyperthreading is enabled, each processor core in the system can supposedly process two threads of data simultaneously. In a nutshell, this means that each core in the system is recognized as having two logical processors. In the case of our 8-core system, when hyperthreading is enabled and when Hyper-V is installed, we essentially have 16 logical processors to allocate to virtual machines. Understand, although hyperthreading does give you more logical processors, when it is enabled, you are working the cores in your system extremely hard, which is why some administrators prefer not to use it. Now, let's have a look at RAM memory. Windows Server 2012 R2 is capable of addressing up to 4 terabytes of RAM memory in a physical server. With Windows Server 2016, and with virtualization and cloud computing continuing to take off, Microsoft has seriously ramped up the scalability of RAM memory to a tremendous 24 terabytes per physical server. Although you might be hard-pressed to find a motherboard that supports that much RAM, it pays to know that Windows Server 2016 will support that much. That covers the scalability for physical servers. So, now let's take a look at scalability for virtual servers. First of all is the number of supported virtual machines. On a Windows Server 2012 R2 server with Hyper-V installed, you can create and run up to 1,024 virtual machines per physical server. 
On Windows Server 2016, this is unchanged. Still, 1,024 virtual machines are supported on a single server with Hyper-V. It's also worth noting that if you're clustering your virtual machines for high availability, you can have up to 64 Windows Server 2016 host servers participating in a single cluster and up to 8,000 virtual machines running in the cluster. Again, these figures are unchanged since Windows Server 2012 R2. In terms of processes that can be allocated to virtual machines, Windows Server 2012 R2 allows up to 64 processes per virtual machine. With Windows Server 2016, this is upped to a maximum of 240 processes. For the RAM memory, Windows Server 2012 R2 permits up to 1 terabyte of RAM for each virtual machine, whereas with Windows Server 2016, impressively you can assign up to 12 terabytes of RAM per virtual machine. Of course, these figures are based on the assumption that the operating system running on the virtual machine can also support that much. Lastly, I will look at disk space for virtual machines. As with Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows Server 2016 supports two types of virtual hard disk. The VHD virtual hard disk and the VHDX virtual hard disk. The sizing limits for both types of virtual hard disk remain unchanged since Windows Server 2012 R2. Each VHD hard disk can be as large as 2 terabytes, and each VHDX virtual hard disk can be as large as 64 terabytes. As you can see, Windows Server 2016 offers amazing scalability, and unless you're working in a data center or large enterprise, it's very unlikely that you'll come close to hitting these limits. Well, that covers the maximum hardware and virtualization limits for Windows Server 2016. In the next video, I will look at the different editions of Windows Server 2016 so that you can pick the right one for your needs. I hope that you've enjoyed this video from Tech Tips from Will. To be notified of new videos when they're released, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.